hidden behind the trees and clusters of houses in Baris Guagua, Pampanga is a beautiful monastery of the Sisters of St. Clare of Assisi, who are also known as the Poor Clare Sisters. The monastery chapel stays open to welcome everyone who wants to visit the Blessed Sacrament and spend time for personal prayer. At the entrance of the monastery is a very spacious visiting area where guests are welcomed. Visitors talk to the sisters only either through the torno or through the iron grills. The grill is just one of the external expressions of our vow of enclosure. And oftentimes, this is the first thing people notice and even question when they come to visit us. Maybe because they feel like we do, the intense separation with these barriers between us when we talk in the parlor window. And especially in our monastery, we do not only have the grill but also the screen. So much so that our visitors who would like to touch us, kiss our hand or hug us, they really could not. The grill and the screen are not only symbolic of our radical detachment and withdrawal from the world, but they guard us and continue to help us become mindful of everything we have given up for the sake of our holy vocation and for reasons of recollection and the attainment of total union with God in contemplation. Those who join the religious life make the profession of the three vows, poverty, chastity, and obedience. But the poor class sisters profess a fourth vow, the vow of enclosure. By professing the vow of enclosure, absolute communion with God becomes a reality in the solitude and silence of the cloister. Enclosure is not meant for security, something to keep us inside and others outside but it serves to maintain an atmosphere conducive to prayerfulness and a reminder to people of the truth of God's existence in the midst of the noise and disturbance in the world. From the moment they enter and put on the habit of a Pogla sister, the nuns spend their whole lives inside this monastery. Except for some extreme reasons, they never go out of this small world of theirs. When they die, they are buried in the cemetery within the monastery grounds. For us who are used to the noise and action of the outside world, this kind of life is a torture. Don't they do anything else but meditate and pray? Don't they talk to one another at all? Oftentimes, people have the misconception that because we live all our days within the four walls of the monastery, we do nothing but pray. Yes, we pray. Indeed, it is our primary contribution to the church at large. But that is not all. We live a balanced life. We consecrate to God the whole cycle of the day and night through the liturgy of the hours. We have adoration, our prayer of the heart before the Blessed Sacrament, and the daily 6 a.m. Mass in which God nourishes us by His Word, by His body and blood, and strengthens our bonds with the whole Church. Every moment of the day, we carry within our hearts all the intentions of the devotees who come here daily to ask for our prayers. Aside from our daily duties, we do some gardening, planting fruit-bearing trees and vegetables too. We have conferences and studies to foster our psycho-spiritual and holistic development. Our regular physical exercises not only keep us healthy, but also calm our minds and regulate our breathing. Something that is essential to our life of prayer and our relationship with one another. Our life might appear difficult and boring because it is a structured kind of life. But for a person whose heart has been fashioned for the contemplative life, everything she does becomes a prayer. 
a source of joy, and an encounter with the Divine, present and at hand at all times. In the evening, while the world is either sound asleep or noisily doing their own nightly business, the Pulkless sisters continue their service of love for the Lord in silence and in prayer. One of our difficulties is interrupted sleep at night, early rising in the morning, suspending our work to say our daytime prayers. This is difficult. But because we love Jesus and we want to put him at the center of our life, we give priority to prayer over our work and our personal needs. Silence is a great and difficult challenge. Aside from our time for recreation at night, we observe silence from sunrise to sunset. We can speak anytime though, but in a subdued voice and only when necessary. The call to monastic life is not a comfortable invitation because you need to give up constant connections with families and friends. The thought of seeing our loved ones only three times a year and write to them only twice a year is frightening and unimaginable. I hesitated when God started to let me feel that He wanted me to become a nun because that would mean I had to give up my plan of getting a good job in order to help my family. I'm the eldest child in my family and to leave them would mean I would be giving up the opportunity to give them a good life when I finish college. But one thing that I have learned when I pronounced my yes to the Lord is that you will never know the will of God for you unless you take the risk and allow God to love you by completely trusting Him. I love adventure. I love to travel to different places. I go bar hopping, enjoy live band, and be jockey with friends. I find pleasure in nightlife. I collected latest gadgets, updated to new fashion. I work here and abroad to earn a living and help my family. But everything turned out very differently and strange when I entered the monastery. The gap of difference is like heaven and earth distance, I should say. Before I can go to places I wanted to visit and see, but now I am confined in a four-corner small world of the monastery. I spent my life here 24-7 year-round in the same place, same faces, follow the same schedule every day. Sickness will be a great opportunity to see the outside world, to visit the doctor. But over all these changes that took place in my life when I entered the monastery is a heart that is becoming a tune and focus in the one thing necessary in life. God, who gives me the all-time season of joy, living in close but free to love, and take pleasure in the timeless enchantment of God's beauty and wonder around me. Who is qualified for this life? Well, anybody who is beautiful. Beautiful, maybe not externally or physically, but beautiful at heart. Because a person who has this quality is constantly connected and in touch with God, who can make her open to new things, new possibilities, and even ready for any change that could take place in her life. She is continually connected to a profound love experience with God and could allow the Lord to expand her heart for her to love without limits.
There is a point in my life inside the cloister when I doubted my call to religious life because I felt humbled and displaced not to have talents and gifts just like the other sisters have. That was a very discouraging but challenging part of my journey. The Lord who called me has manifested himself in a very personal way to make me feel valued, not because of what I can do, but because of his love that made him choose me for this life. Talents and gifts are important, but these do not define a person, but the way one extends herself to make God present and loved, both in our giftedness and imperfections. This is the living quarter of the monastery. I still feel the pain, the tension, and the sadness when I recall the day I left my family and given up my bright future as a young professional. And this decision has not been very easy for my family to accept when I entered the cloister. Our daughter entered the monastery on the 23rd of December, 1987, without our consent. Lisa promised me that she will come back home for Christmas after a retreat, which she usually does it every Christmas break. But only a letter and a piece of her jewelry came to us at Christmas year. I know Lisa will do it, but I never expected it was too soon, for she was very clear with her dreams and plans to pursue. The whole family was devastated and became terribly sad because it was like losing her forever. I have been very peaceful and contented with my decision because I have learned a very important lesson with that experience the day I entered the monastery. That life is not all about what we want, but what God wants. Hello, my name is Mary Claire and I am the niece of Mother Lisa, but I call her Ninang Madre, which is Tagalog for Godmother. My Ninang, she had many opportunities and a bright future to look forward to, but she gave up all of that so she could follow her call to the Lord. Every time I'm at the monastery, I am filled with pure joy because I'm able to see the simplicity of the life of the sisters of Port Claire. These women have given and sacrificed things that you and I enjoy every day. For example, TV, computers, cell phones, Starbucks, eating out, comfortable bed, to things of just like spending time with our families. Can you imagine not seeing your family or speaking to them for months or even years at a time? Despite these sacrifices, the sisters are still happy and it has shown me that it truly is a blessing, the life that they live. I speak for my family and for myself when I say that we are grateful for the precious moments that we do share with them. In reality, we never lost my Nina Madre. Instead, God has blessed our family with the gift of vocation to serve Him and His people through her. There are only 11 sisters staying in this monastery. And one may wonder why they had to build such a big chapel and a spacious visiting area. Well, the sisters with their life of poverty surely do not need a huge structure as this. But the crowd of people who come to worship God with them and those who come to request for prayers surely need a more spacious and comfortable place. Traditionally, monasteries are called the powerhouses of the church since they contribute to the mission of the church by their intense life of prayer and daily self-giving. Our share in the mission of the Church is eminently spiritual by understanding and embracing all aspects of human conditions and accompanying the apostolic mission of those who exert themselves by proclaiming the gospel.
The people in Batis, Pampanga, as well as from neighboring areas, know that they have the light of hope shining in their midst. They feel they are not alone in their journey through life. The sisters are always there to help them find their way in their dark moments. The nuns are there journeying with them in prayer and in lifting up their petitions to God. The Poor Clare Sisters, with their life of prayer and contemplation, remain unseen by the eyes of the world because they are hidden in the heart of God.